Okay, so now we're just going to dive into a bit more about what you can do in this formula bar and you know, things around syntax, comments, and variables. So these are all very important just um, techniques to get into to get into your work patterns you know, in Power BI as quickly as possible. And just you know, making knowing that they're available to you. Okay, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to just change things around a little bit here. Okay, I'm going to get rid of some of these um, these slicer tables, and I'm going to clean things up a little bit here. I'm going to get rid of. Um, I'm going to change it over. I'm going to change it over to the date. So I'm going to bring the date in here. I'll get rid of customers. One thing that um, I find a little bit annoying with the dates here is it, it builds an automatic hierarchy into your tables. So what I do, and please, and please note because I get this question a lot, is this drop down here, this here, this little arrow, you click that and you get rid of the hierarchy and go date. And then you'll have here um, every single date. And one other thing that I might do here is I don't really like this format here. So I'm going to click on this table area. I'm going to come across the date. I'm going to highlight it. And then I'm going to change the format over here to um, this new format here. Okay, and then I come back over here and I've got my my dates. Now one other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually drag my date up here again. And I'm going to create a slicer out of it. Okay, so I'm going to click on slicer. And again, the hierarchy has got me, which is again really annoying. So just hold on a second. We'll delete it and we'll bring it again. I'll get rid of the hierarchy, bring the date, and then I'll click on date. And then this, this is what I wanted. I just wanted this slicer here so I can quickly change the time frame. So we're only looking at a very narrow space of time. Okay, so let's let's create a formula that's a little bit more complex. And I'm gonna write this in a way that I just um, is very suboptimal, okay? that looks um, really complicated and uh, needlessly okay it doesn't need to be anywhere near that complicated okay so i'm going to um, come up here i'm going to create a new measure say we wanted to get you know far more specific inside of our measures we certainly could so let's say um let's say uh hold on a sec i'm just going to push control i'm just going to double check my location table here so what have we got here? So we've got yeah, a range of different states. What I want to do, I want to just look at my, I want to like sort of within my measure, I want to just look at Florida sales. So maybe I want to compare my overall sales that I make to just my Florida sales. Okay. So I still want to calculate total sales up there. And I want to create a new measure that says, hey, look at my Florida sales. Okay. So I can go like this. I'm going to go Florida sales. Okay. Now to do this, use a function called um, calculate. Okay, I'll cover calculate in a bit more detail first. I just want to show you some formatting things here. Um, um, yeah, you know, we'll, and we we'll cover calculate in a later section. I'm going to go. I'm going to go and find my measure here, which is quite cool. You can actually insert measures within your formulas, um, and this is this is a concept called measure branching, which I which which is quite unique to how I like to. Um, my sort of methodology around development inside of Power BI, especially with DAX. And I'm going to go total sales, and then I'm going to go, uh, I'm going to write filter, right? Then I'm going to go look through the locations table because I only want to find lo um, states, right? States, I can go state code here actually, states that equal to Florida. So I'm just going to go FL. Okay, and then I can go um, and go close brackets, close brackets. Um, fit what, so filter basically allows me to you know, create a filter within a fun function or within a formula. Okay, so just push enter. Okay, and then I'm going to drag that into my table. And now we're comparing just our Florida sales versus our total sales. Okay, so you could you know, from here calculate even more interesting things like what's the percentage of Florida sales to total sales, those sort of things. Okay, but let's let's go. Let's move on. I want to do something even more complicated here. What I want to do is I don't want to just look at Florida sales. I also want to look at sales of specific products. Okay, so Florida sales, and maybe we'll just look at products. Say product 
um, product name. Let's have a look at products where product name. Okay, so I'm just going to find product name. And you see here that I'm just arrowing down and pushing tab. That brings up um, things a lot quicker. The IntelliSense is really good inside of DAX. Um, and all throughout Power BI actually. And then I'm going to say, okay, well, product one, like so. Then I'm going to use this. Um, I'm going to go. I'm going to try, use or. And what you can do to do to find or is you can actually do double lines like that, double straight lines like that. And then I'm going to say product or product one or product two. Okay, so I'm going to go product name is equal to product product two product two like this. Okay. Okay, and then I've got I I completed that one and then that one. Okay, so now if I go enter, okay, I probably want to change the name of the function itself. So Florida sales um, of product one or two, okay, and push enter. So you see here that now I have quite a long measure name, which isn't that great to be honest. Um, and then now I have um, a, a measure which is calculating that specific result. Okay, so it doesn't look like there's actually many results based on the filtering that we have at the moment, which is okay. That's all right. Um, maybe we'll try. Let's try some different products. See if we can see if we can at least get some. So let's put a two and three. Let's see if we can actually get any sales. No, so none there as well. Um, let's try another one. Let's try five. Okay, maybe if we let's just change this time frame here. Ah, okay, cool. Okay, so here we go. So we've got a different time frame. And it looks like all of these products were maybe bought at a different time, but that's okay. You know, that's not the that's not sort of all the meaning of this this particular video. Um, okay, so now we've got this. Now the one thing I want to highlight here is how suboptimal this looks. Okay, that's this is the problem. It doesn't. This looks too complicated by you know in terms of how I've written it. Okay, so what we can do is we can clean this up, and this is what I really want you to focus on early on. Okay. And you don't need to get too overcomplicated with the rules. To get down to a new row, all you need to do is hold down Shift and Enter at the same time. And then Tab enables you to bring out a, um, a function out a, a couple of, uh, yeah, out a different spacing. Okay, so I'm basically just bringing these down and see immediately how much better this actually reads, okay, from what we had before. And so, really easy fix um, when you're writing more complex formula. You, you know, the way I usually do it is I just say, okay, well, if there's, if there's, you know, the, to me, there's no set rules. I just say, okay, if there is something important, like a, like a function that can all sit, on, or like a piece of logic that can all sit on one row, I will generally have that on a row by itself with a tab in front of it, so that it's sort of like a, um, uh, descending, you know, sort of descending on that sort of slope, okay. Then I want to show you what you can also do with, with what are called variables. Okay, so what you can do here is you can use um, var. You can uh, just write in var, and you can name your variable whatever you like. It just needs to be one word, no spaces or anything. So I'm going to go location. Um, actually, we'll go Florida. Florida location. Okay, and then I can just go equals. And then what I can do within variables is I can put singular results. I can also put tables. So this is this is this is what's called a table function, okay? And then to um, actually make this work, what you need to do is you need to put return above the um, before above the actual final logic. And so what I can do instead of having this full formula here, I can actually use my variable which I just created, and then it appears in the IntelliSense. Pretty cool, right? And then what I can do up here again is I can go var, and then I can say um, product selection, something like that. I can name it. You can name it whatever you like. 
And then I'm, what I'm going to do just to clean this up, I'm going to lift this from here, put it up here, and then I'm going to change this into my variable that I just created. And you'll see down here, product selection is what I just created, and then I can go um, tab, and then I've got a much cleaner function down here. Okay, so see how much cleaner this actually is compared to what we had, you know, at the very beginning, and then secondary what we had just before. The last thing that I want to go over is you can actually write comments all throughout your this formula bar. Just by going forward slash twice, you can say this measure calculates um, Florida sales for different products. Right? Okay. And so you can put these, you can put you can you can you can actually put comments wherever you like. Comment. You know, you can you can add it add it wherever you like, okay? And it doesn't actually um, get registered in terms of any through any calculation that that the, the DAX formula would do. Okay, so that's what I want to cover there. Um, that's just a bit about you know how you can really clean things up and some just keep it simple, okay? Just keep it really simple. You know, the one thing I just don't want to see is just you know writing formulas out without any thought put to how to make it look more readable because DAX when you get more complex and more advanced is it is un, unreadable you know if you have it like that you just there's just no way you can comprehend what is actually going on and so you're doing yourself huge favors and just spending a little bit of time getting into the routine of setting up your formulas more efficiently okay let's uh, let's move on and um, get uh, we'll, we'll have another video and, and then round off this particular section